everybody. How are you guys? Um, this is um, put on by BRAC. BRAC is a organization that I worked with in, in New York and it's an art school and I was teaching photography there. And it's a really great facility. It's got a whole lot of really cool things. If you ever um, get a chance, drop by. Um, what else? So we are doing a virtual show. I really haven't done this before, but we're doing a virtual show. And um, I'm gonna show you my work. So, and then we're gonna talk about my work or we're gonna talk about, you know, anything that this work pulls up. The first thing I want to do is um, do a commercial that I did for the New York State um, Health Department. And um, that's the first thing I'm going to play. And um, after that, then I'm going to show you some of my work. I have, I have it categorized into natural light, um, humanity, and um, professional work. So bear with me. I'm going to share my screen in a hot second here. I just had it up. I got to find it again. All right. Yeah. In the meantime, just to let people know that BRAC stands for Bronx River Art Center. We're located in the West Farm Square area section of the Bronx. And uh, as an organization, we've been around for 40 years in this same building. Uh, but we were out of the building for eight years for renovations. So Hosea came in just in time to see our brand spanking new facilities. Yeah, and it's really okay. great. I have really great students and um, it's a really great place to work. Um, am I sharing right this very second? No, not okay. yet. I'm gonna hit screen share. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go there. And I do a lot of things with- um, Wait a minute, you're not okay. there yet. Okay. There you are, there okay. you are. Great, I do a lot of things with social marketing um, agencies. So this is a thing I did with a campaign in 2016 called HIV Stops With Me. And Janine, you know, we shot this in your house. So um, <laughs> here we go, okay? And thank you, Janine. Just to be home, a second and go, right 
guys. I started with that because today is like Friday. And um, also, I just wanted to show what I do as a director. And um, as well as like, that was a commercial and what it was supposed to have been about were, um, was people who were recently diagnosed with HIV and kind of like the trauma they go through literally to um, start taking their meds and start taking care of themselves and stuff like that. So um, the advertising agency asked me to come up with like a concept and everything. And so I literally came up with the concept from you know beginning to end as far as the visuals that were concerned and all that good stuff. And so that's why I thought I'd start with that. The next thing, and if you have any questions about it or any questions about anything that I um, show or present here right now, please stop me, ask the question. I made diagrams of my lighting um, situations, my lighting setups and things like that. So if you have a question about something. Um, based on that one, the next thing I wanna go into is what I call humanity. And humanity is pretty much everything that I shoot on my cell phone. And I call it humanity because it's just a real slice of life about um, life here. Some of these things, like let's go to the very first one. This was done in Nigeria, actually. And- um, Okay, did, was, did you, you're not screen sharing yet. Oh, my bad, hold on. La, 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 la. Screen share. Did I do it? Not yet. Okay, here we go. Yes, now you're on. Okay, so this first image. This dude became my absolute best friend. He still is. We met on Facebook, but when I got to Nigeria and he saw me in Nigeria posting things on Facebook, we met and we just became really great friends. And um, he's a designer there. And um, he showed me, I was staying with some pretty much middle-class people in um, Nigeria, upper middle-class people. And he came by and he said, I wanna teach you what real Nigerians, how real Nigerians live. And he took me and we um, did a zillion things on public transportation in Nigeria. And um, he just gave me my real introduction to, my real like introduction to like humanity. That's why I call this body of work humanity. But it's between New York, Mississippi, Nigeria um, and every, you know, places in between. This is an image, oh God, I wish I really, every, once a year in Harlem, there's a ceremony for a spiritualist and I can't think of his name right now. But on that day, when you walk through Harlem, you see the absolute most beautiful people decked out in the most beautiful outfits. I don't want to call them costumes, but, um, and the streets are just filled from 125th to one, just like that little square there at 125th and Lenox, between Lenox and Adam Clayton Powell. And that's where that image is from. This is another image from there as well. Um, I literally just walked through Manhattan with my cell phone. It really feels, and I do that because I hate walking through with a big camera. And I've never been able to, I kind of feel like I get a lot of more freedom walking through Manhattan with a cell phone. It makes me really incog, as I say, Negro, incognito and not visible as a photographer on the street. So um, you know who that is if you know me, that's Jojo, that's my husband. But, um, and we walk around a lot too. But in the same, in the same vein, I just kind of like shoot these things through on the streets of, on the streets. Are you that, using iPhone? This is my iPhone, yes. Okay. All right, that's on a beach in Nigeria. And the strange thing about that is that you walk on a beach and these men approach you and they make you literally pay to get on the beach. And your first inclination is to be like upset, you know, as an American, to be upset. And um, but when you get into the whole psyche of everything that is going on and you um, pay, you literally get treated like a king. So that was my little hut for the day I had. And um, we just hung out, that's me and my boy again, and um, Nigeria on the beach. Then we go, and this is just walking around town. 
with my um, with my camera. Now here, my mother took that picture. That's a picture of me holding my father as he died. And um, oh, I don't, oh, there we go. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if I can make it bigger. But as a photographer, it was just you know interesting that my mother grabbed the camera and took that picture. It like just really, you know, when you're going through all this stuff, and she was you know just aware enough to take that picture. I just thought that was interesting. And this is walking through Harlem. I think that might be Queens. I love shooting humans on subways and having Harlem to do that in is just a great place. Nigeria, wish it was bigger. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I don't even know how to, let's see if I can make it bigger. Nope, I can make that bigger. I'm sorry, I, um, I'm in Chicago right now. I don't have all my stuff with me. So the hard drives I have actually don't have much on them. Nigeria. And when I went to if Nigeria, you I went pinch there. your screen, you can expand. I'm sorry. Jose, if yes. The, uh, the people, uh, if the people are watching on iPad, you can expand the image with your, your fingers. You can pinch it a little bit to make it bigger on, on their screen if they want. Thank you, Greg. Um, if you want, yeah, if you can do that, because I'm, I'm working well on hard drives and I didn't bring everything with me to Chicago. But um, I went to Nigeria to teach photography and I taught there for a month. And in that month, you know, it was just a real education in um, life and beauty. And we were teaching these kids to do photography and, um, we were part of the group. We uh, created ads, public service announcement ads about how to prevent disease like malaria, things like that in their uh, environment and things that they can do. And we created these calendars. And on the last day, we went through the village and we passed all these calendars and posters to, um, to the residents of the village. And um, it was just a really sweet moment. And everybody, it was a really great end to a great program. portrait of one of the teachers that I worked with in, um, in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. so Beautiful. Street. Thank you. If I go too fast or something like that. Slow down, Jose. Too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Greg. <laughs> That's my best friend, Greg, from Beautiful. Chicago. We've known each other for more than 40 years. And he and I started running around wow. with cameras in Chicago 40 years ago and fighting over if we should take a picture of a person or not in case of like in a sense, remember that fight Greg with the dude in the wheelchair? Oh, <laughs> no, I don't remember that. We had a few. <laughs> <laughs> you went right up to him and took the picture and I was like, no, you can't do that to people. <laughs> you know? No, my mother as a photographer <laughs> has the same issue. Mm -hmm. you know, right, same exact yeah. issue. Some people are more yeah, comfortable yeah. as street photographers, some aren't. You know. Yeah, I'm the shy street photographer. I'm always like sneaking a picture of things. <laughs> Hi, Jose. Hey, who's that? Hey, Connie. How are <laughs> you? <Hey. laughs> And this is my place of that. Oh, Mrs. Brown, Connie, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. I ran across a picture of you just the other day. Wow. An old picture of you on top of the railroad tracks or something when you and Greg and Lisa were trying to film something. We, we actually created a great film that day. <laughs> Saw it not too long ago. Wow. Yeah. Thanks for joining in. Thank you. Great to see you. <laughs> so these are images of just Manhattan. Let's see. I'm going to go fast because I want to get through and I want to show you some professional work. Mm -hmm. Can I just do these this again? Oh, there. Now here, that's a picture in the background. That's a picture I did for an organization. Um, uh, 
Okay. And the picture in the background is a picture of mine that was just running, an ad of mine that was running on the subway. And of course, that's Nigeria. 125th. And just humans being humans. That's me and my husband. That's my husband, Miss Brown. <laughs> and our friend Imelda. That's in Nigeria, one of the artists that I worked with in Nigeria. Cool. 125th Street. And most of, a lot of these pictures that end up on my phone actually end up on Instagram. That's moving. Mm, thank you. Like I said, if you have any questions about it, I'll show you some of, and I find that selfies are, there was an artist called Cindy Sherman. She was famous for doing selfies probably back in the 1970s. And um, I really think that selfies are as much of an art form as anything else we do nowadays. And it's just the emotion of just going to work or walking through the streets or going from point A to point B, I find very interesting in humans. Especially in big cities. Yeah. Who knows that dude? Everybody seems to like you. They, they don't, uh the people who you shot they're not scrowling at you you know <laughs> not too many well, I kind of, some of I, them are smiling at you which is sort of amazing for i kind of think are I'm they just, aware i don't think they're aware i try to not have them be aware okay but some will look you in the face yes that's true <laughs> Mm, that's nice. Sometimes it's the, the, like it's the energy you bring to the situation also, also helps. And if you're comfortable, and I think by now, Jose is very comfortable shooting on the street. On the street, yeah. Yeah, and the cell phone, I, when we were kids, Greg, I was always so nervous having that camera in my hand, the big 35 millimeter. And it's just something about the cell phone that makes me feel as though I'm invisible. Mm. How cute that is. <laughs> and this goes, I'm going to go, I got a bunch of these. That's Nigeria. And these guys absolutely know I'm shooting them. Starbucks in Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that last Starbucks, that was probably Queens. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> They did not drink coffee. I was so kind of like upset. I'm like, where are the coffee houses? I had dreams of smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee and philosophizing with Africans, but they didn't drink coffee in Nigeria. I missed the beginning here. Did you, um, was this a, um, did you go to Nigeria as a, um, you know, return to your roots kind of thing, or is that your family's? No, it's like, I have no idea what part of Africa my family came mm -hmm. from, my ancestors. Mm -hmm. But I went to Nigeria to teach photography. Ah. And, ah. Um, you know, and I work for an organization called You Are, We Are for Africa. I think it's You Are for Africa. And it's also another name they have is Public Art Nigeria. And, um, <laughs> thank you, Greg. Uh oh, get back here. And so these were just men in the village and people in the village that I lived in. And everybody was super welcoming. I felt as though, as the plane landed, I literally felt as though I said it in my prayer as we were coming down was like, I am so happy to be home after 500 years. Mm -hmm. And um, it was incredible to melt into a society where you looked exactly like everyone else 
and um, it just felt like incredibly welcoming. I felt at home the moment I got on the airplane, literally, because everyone there was just so African, but it was just so, like, it's a feeling that I, I just could not, it was so hard to describe, but it's just like, I just melted and was just like, for the first time in my life, I didn't stand out, it seemed. <laughs> completely comfortable like more comfortable than you can imagine wow what's interesting is when you can feel that way but still not understand the language you know but you could still feel that close that happened to me going to eastern europe mm -hmm. where my family is from and of course i had you know, no ability to understand Czech or Slovak or Russian, but I had that same feeling. I mean, I was, that's my people, you know, a, I, yeah. I felt it. Yeah, it was, it was that feeling, like just complete and total belonging. Yeah. And when I would get lost sometimes, I would um, literally say, to explain to people that my father lying and telling them that I was somehow half Nigerian and half American and I'm just here and can you help me out and they would just take me and treat me like a lost child like a child who had just come mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. and absolutely everyone was so sweet well, you, you know you even hear that though from people that are missionaries there in, in Nigeria mm -hmm. that the people are so welcoming, mm, no yeah. matter what color they are. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, I spent, I lived in Italy for a while and I felt just like I belonged and owned everything in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very funny. So this is more um, Harlem, subway, humanity. We do best. Wait for transportation. Hey. Or sometimes we play music and entertain absolutely everyone around us with the most beautiful music. And that's another beautiful thing. I miss music. Yeah. Music in the subway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you shifted to black and white sometimes. And are you shifting that on the camera? Yeah, camera and, you know, of course, black and white has that feeling of, um, what do you call it, eternity, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, or there's another word that's better than eternity, I'm sure. That's a nice but, one. I like that, Roosevelt, with that close-up cut face, cut-off face, very nice. <laughs> Timelessness. Timeless. Timelessness. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is me at a fashion event, but doing something outside of what I was being paid for. And that was absorb, uh, uh, you know, really looking at what was happening in the in the um, event other than the fashion show. Wow, she's beautiful. Yeah. So many of these colors, the, all this is on the uh, iPhones? This is all iPhone. And are you, shooting, are iPhone? you shooting in square format mostly? Um, I shoot a lot in square and a lot of times after I, you know, in my cropping process, I crop it square. Uh -huh. If I'm not shooting square on the iPhone. It's amazing, the quality, I mean, it's hard for me to feel convinced that the quality of the iPhone is better than the other cameras. You know, you go out and buy a like $2,000 camera and in one year it's out of, you know, it doesn't have enough pixels and, but your iPhone has, it does a better shot. You know, it's yeah. time to stop wasting money on those big fancy cameras. And it's, well, you know, the pixels in those things are so large now. In the iPhones. And another thing I love about um, my pictures, I try to include or use lines. An entire planet is made up of lines. Mm -hmm. But 
Um, that's another thing I wanted to talk about doing this thing was just lines and how they direct you or how the artist can use lines to mm -hmm. the viewer to look at exactly what they want them to look at. And sometimes just implied lines The lines don't have to actually be there. But, you know, we all, you know, everything's a line. Every circle in the world is a line. Every triangle is a line. But I just find lines very interesting. And if you use them as, um, and I'm sure every artist out there knows this, but you know, just talking. If you use them as um, part of your um, composition, and uh, be very conscious of the lines in your composition, your pictures just come out way better. Yeah, especially like also looking at the way your picture ends in corners, mm -hmm. in the four corners. That's um, like the shape that gets created in the corner really can make we a picture use a perspective or perspective a lot yeah and perspective is a word that's my mother and my nephew oh. on our way to mississippi by a train <laughs> My goodness, you've done a lot of traveling, haven't you? Yeah, there we are. We're all on a train getting ready to go to Mississippi. Oh, we just got there. We're in Greenwood, Mississippi. Really? Mm -mm -mm. That's a very sweet family. Only, I mean, not only everywhere, but like, you know, absolutely every person in that picture waved and said hello. <laughs> <laughs> So just to move along, that's me and my hotel in Mississippi, my high socks. But just to move along back to Harlem. And that was another thing. When you look at these, if I separated these pictures and took out the pictures from Mississippi, Nigeria, and Harlem and mixed them together, you pretty much would not be able to tell the difference as far as the people. <laughs> So I'm going to go from here. I'm going to end this. Let me see if there's anything really crazy I want to see here. Uh. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going a little faster. Just a little faster so I can get to some commercial work. Okay. Anybody got any questions about anything that they've seen here? Anybody want to make any um, comment about anything they've seen here? I have a question. Um, the like the time when when this happened, like the combination of New York and Nigeria, is this like recent work or uh, a while um, ago? Or I, think I, was, I was in Nigeria five years ago when um, I did the program there, and so these pictures here are before that and after that, up until I left New York three months ago, four months ago. I see. So, um, and I actually had, I didn't get a chance to load them up, but I had so many images from Chicago from my last few, you know, from this last few months and St. Louis. And I just, um, that was one of the principles I worked for in Nigeria. What part of our program also in Nigeria was to take children from private schools and children from public schools and do programs together because the ideal was to build the relationships between the classes, because it's not like here we have a race problem, there they have a class problem. And that's what most of our project, all of our projects that we did, we would pick up the public school children and take them to the private schools and we would do projects with them together. That was part of our stuff. And this is uh, the woman who started it all. We met at a program in Chicago and I lived with her family in Nigeria. How long were you there? I stayed for a month. Wow. It wasn't long enough, was it? No, I cried like a baby when I had to leave. <laughs> <It>, uh, <laughs> there's another one of the young ladies in there. Did you enjoy the food there? I enjoyed the food. There was a, a person in my group who absolutely refused to eat anything. And there happened to be a Kentucky Fried Chicken in town, and I think she ate a Kentucky Fried Chicken for a month. Oh. 
Mm. I have to say your portrait work is incredibly strong, even though, you know, you, maybe you, you think of yourself more as a, um, a street photographer, but the portraiture and is very strong. And of course the quality of the camera is, you know, the lens is very helpful in that regard. But when you get these, um, get up close like that on those faces, well, first of all, that's where your rapport comes out, I think, where you're able to get whoever it is that you're taking a straight on shot of, you know, they know you're shooting them and it's a straight on and boy, you've got them hooked whether they're, you know, they smile at you or they look you in the eye, they really give themselves to you. And that's the art of a, a good portrait photographer is to be able to create that dialogue instant. And of course, photography is an instantaneous um, medium to get that rapport that quickly that you can get that kind of like visual eye-to-eye di -eye dialogue from your subject and get that uh, in a shot is, is quite a skill. And then, and then also just the compositionally and color-wise, there's um, very strong aesthetic stuff going on in those portraits that, you know, like where you take like this one, where you take the head and you put it to one side and then you've got that blue wall and that white line bars or whatever that is, you know, there's a um, very strong aesthetic of composition. Of course, this one that's black and white with the um, silhouette head and the, I don't know, what, I, I hope that's not a living thing. No, that, it, that was my up for the day as I sat on a beach to keep me protected from the sun. It was like, like I said, the, they make you pay, literally, there are men who, before you walk on the beach, they say, where are you going? And you have to pay them to get on the beach. And at first, you want to get insulted, but like, if you do, you have to understand there are no jobs, there's nothing here, there's the only way to make say, any yeah. money. That, so I, that's it, part of the economy, that's the economy, the, the if tourist, not these people would right. starve. Exactly, and it's the tourist tax. But once I, you know, once I gave in and, you know, didn't fight it with my ego, it was like I was completely protected by these people, you know, by these guys, you know, completely and totally protected and anything I wanted, they, you know, ran and grabbed it for me. And mm -hmm. that was, you know, and it was a small price to pay for the most incredible service, you know what I mean? Like the most incredible, like they just took care of you once you did mm -hmm. that. So it was a very small price to pay. But yeah, I really enjoyed my stay there. And I really, you know, the portraits, I was really happy with the, you know, some of the pictures I got there. And I wish, you know, of course. How I do wish, you know, store all of your pictures? I'm sorry? How do you store all of your pictures? All these pictures, as I escaped from New York and just packed up and left because so many people were dying, I just grabbed a, as many hard drives as I could and a computer. And I ran to my truck and I got in and I drove away. And um, so it's like, that's how these, all these pictures are coming, are off of hard drives that I brought with me from my uh, house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When so, you said you got in your car, what do you mean? You drove? Oh, that's when you went to places like Mississippi or something? You went by car? No, I went, I came to, from New York to Chicago by car. Uh -huh. after I left um, and I can't wait to get back to my apartment and I miss it so much, but there were so many things happening at the height of the COVID-19 uh, virus. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a narcotic dealer in my building as well. And I was just, I just felt like the world was coming, like getting too close to me, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I was cleaning his floor and I was cleaning my floor, but you know, the moment I was like, we have to get out of here. Literally, I just, my apartment looked like a tornado would hit it and I just packed things in bags and threw them in my truck and ran to New York. I mean, ran to Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so it was kind yeah. of, um, I'm not on all of them. Be... When, when was this? This was uh, about, I've been here for like four months now. Yeah, that was the beginning. March. Of the... March. Yeah, it was like 800 people dying a night when I left. Uh, yeah. Chicago. Yeah. It's time so, to get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to go to what I call my professional work. 
And like I said, I do a lot of um, social marketing and I always, a lot of it is surrounding um, HIV, encouraging people to use condoms and stuff like that. This I did for um, in Philadelphia and they were ended up being bus posters and stuff like that. I was looking desperately for all the outtakes because the outtakes from these things are like so much more interesting, but I didn't bring them with me. But um, so these were um, ran and it just to help um, really wrap your mind around protecting yourself and protecting the people around you from um, STDs. Mm -hmm. and that's where this mm -hmm. stuff comes from. And um, this was for the New York City Health Department. The last one was for the um, Philadelphia Health Department. And just um, images of people and just trying to encourage people to um, literally take their meds. That's an essence, essence cover. I do consider myself a portrait photographer, um, mm -hmm. more so than a fashion photographer. Mm -hmm. And I came to New York like 30 years ago, 1989, um, wanting to do portrait photography. And uh, this is an actress from a television show. I can't really think of the name of it. But um, I think it just ended this season. Uh, her name is Notori Noddington. It's not ready again. <laughs> oh. oh, can you see it? Yeah, ready again, it says. Oh, no, that means that oh. it's ready for me to put onto my website. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then that's. The difference, I don't know if you can see this essence cover down here. And then this is like my picture that I use to promote myself, but it's the same picture. That's Ayana. Yeah. You really captured her. Thank you. This is a guy, he's an actor. I think he's on the arrow right now with Rick Gonzalez. And I did these pictures for, I'm doing a series of photographs called Afro, or I'm doing, I'm trying to put together a book. Look at that hair. That's amazing. And it's called Afro. Yeah, I was trying to figure out if that was his hair or the wall or a bush in back. Yeah, it's his hair. I had him comb it out because I wanted to shoot his Afro. And I've been uh, shooting Afros on people for a while. That's so let, let me ask you about your um, lighting, your relationship to lighting your subjects, because of course you have the studio shots that are, you're obviously using studio lights for that, I would assume. Right. And then, but your outdoor shots also, the lighting looks very interesting. So you're very, very sensitive about how to light a face. Because otherwise, a lot of times you can get very washed out or too dark or whatever. But all your portraits, the lighting is, that's what makes the others, even though they're the ones in Nigeria were straight shots. I don't, you weren't using lights for that necessarily, I don't think. But that's that your eye is so well tuned to the quality of the light, um, even when you don't use lights. But on these other portraits, you're using lights, right? Right. And, um, but they're not hot, they're not dark, they're not, you know, they're perfect. Right. And so like here, in this picture of Rick Gonzalez, if you look under his eyes, you see the shadow. And so you got to figure we were outside around 12 noon or somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. So I probably, and I have to do a lot of this from my memory, although I, have, I know what I did. I took artificial light and I used it and balanced it enough to open the shadows under his eyes that are not completely like black. And um, that's how I would achieve that. I do that with two ways. I carry a small flash with me if I'm doing commercial work. And I also have an assistant who's probably standing off to the left side of this picture, the right side of this picture, with a silver reflector. Wow! So you're actually you doing that even when you're out in the street? You're can you're manually hand managing the light. This is not photoshopping when you get it in. This no. is manually handling the light when you're in the street. That's yeah. another feat. That's kind of amazing. 
Yeah, I'm really, um, you know, controlling the light. And even if I'm not, you know, it's like I'm always controlling like here, you can, that there's a round shape near that hose at the bottom. And that's that's, shadow. that shadow is someone above him holding mm -hmm. a, um, the, the light a, reflector, a, a right. light reflector over him to bl actually block the sun. Wow. All right. Very interesting. Jose. Yes. Uh, did, did you shoot all these photos in color and then change them to black and white in, in your iPhone? Yeah, it's, well, the, in the iPhone, it is. And even actually in reality, at this point in history, everything is shot in color because it's all digital. This is all, I brought no, all of my work that's um, analog film camp film, I literally left it all in New York, but um, everything that I've been shooting probably since the year 2000 has been digital. Okay. Now in your commercial, started out in black and white and went to color. In, yeah, in black and white, I used, if, if it's analog and it's black and white, nine times out of 10, it was shot black and white. But with the digital camera, I could set this camera on black and white, but I would um, lose the ability to make it color, I guess, mm -hmm. if I chose to get a later date or something like that. So you would also, Hosea, you would also lose the beautiful makeup. <laughs> oh, you, yeah, all right. Oh, and this, 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 Alicia, this is Alicia's <laughs> makeup right here. She's a makeup artist on this. And yeah, I would lose it, but you know, <laughs> thank you, Elise, for your beautiful makeup, <laughs> you know? And so this is a story we shot in Los Angeles for the magazine. It's a um, trade magazine called Diversity Professional. Diversity Professional. Thank you very much. And Elise did all of this makeup here, which is beautiful. How long have you been working commercially? I'm sorry? How long have you been working commercially? Well, I literally moved to New York from Chicago, you know, to be a commercial photographer. So it's been pretty much my, um, I've been shooting commercially. I guess I stopped assisting other photographers in like 1995 and started shooting mm -hmm. as a mm -hmm. photographer after that. So I've been shooting commercially since then. Do you do the, you don't do the graphics on these things though. You do the shots and then a graphic designer does the layout on the. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. Like this premiere preview issue of this magazine, the person who mm -hmm. contacted me, I literally did a lot of this because she didn't know where she was going with the magazine at that point. And um, now this is where they are now. And they're beyond this at this point. Mm -hmm. But I didn't do any of that. But with this very first shoot here, I um, was able to, you know, come up with the headlines and everything. But it was just kind of helping them out. So that's, uh, my, that's uh, my, my copy and everything. Too. Nice to see your photographs so well used, right? Like the graphic design is really spectacular. Yes. So they really, you know, did justice to your photographs and vice versa. Yeah. Sometimes that's, you know, that's sometimes you do miss out on that when other people take your images and do what they want with them. Yeah. And yeah. And not be very good designers. But in this case, whoever is the graphic designer. Very good. These little images here, I wish they were bigger, but they're from another HIV campaign. And then the art here is just really trying to make a person who's not a model. And it's the art with the other things because none of these people are models. You have to uh, literally talk them into or direct them into modeling mm -hmm. which ones you're talking about the i can't trans what is that 
I'm oh, talking about yeah. these guys here. They're, they're just, they're literally professionals who, you know, work every day, but you have to teach, you have to show them how to stand, how to sit. Wow, you are an artist with that. You really get your, your subjects to, in line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's how I booked that commercial. It was Me? based on the art director saying, you really work well with these models. Can you do a commercial for us? And the first thing I showed, and that's how I booked that commercial. It wasn't, I wasn't going around with a reel or anything. It was just that she noticed that I could really talk to people. What commercial? Um, when I first started, I showed a commercial I shot earlier. Um, the first thing that we um, viewed. For what product? It's for, um, it was for the HIV Stops With Me campaign. It was done for the oh. New York Department of Health. I see. And so like these guys were, you know, these are just regular guys also. This was, this became, Alicia, did you do this makeup? She can't hear me or maybe she's muted. But I think she did this makeup as well. And this be this is a act a woman a singer named Layla Hathaway Layla James I'm sorry, wow we did this in Los Angeles as well. Are we all seeing these things in the small? Um... Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have large files with me. I thought I found these. Oh, okay. I just didn't know whether I didn't have my computer set right. Yeah, it's my bad. And then here's another one. This woman is a swimming instructor at a club on like 45th Street in Manhattan and 8th Avenue. And so she became our model for the day. But the two male models are male models. But she, we had to really direct her to standing and holding her head and, you know, all that stuff. But it came out really cool. In the water? <laughs> yeah, in the water. Yeah. <laughs> and this is probably from the New York Department of Health uh, website where they took, these were also regular people. You might notice that dude, he's an actor. But um, regular people for this ad, and this, uh, this is from their website. So they hired you to do that and then they bring in, did they recruit the people for these shots? Yeah, these people all answered ads in the back of Craigslist, I believe. Right, that's interesting. Wow. This is an advertorial for L'Oreal hair products, I guess, for a Christmas style hair product mm -hmm. thing. That's Harlem United when they first started introducing the HIV um, drugs, the PrEP drugs that you would take to help prevent contacting, contracting HIV. That guy again. Let's see what else. Hold on. Let's see what else we got here. Um, web images. Let's see how big these come up. Uh, yeah, so small. So, oh, are you introducing our students to um, the um, career aspect of photography as well as the art aspect that, you know, what you're showing? I mean, obviously, you became successful. Um, you're making a living off of your photography. Yeah, I absolutely do. Excuse me, everyone. I'm looking for pictures that are big. And I had to steal these from the website. So, sorry, I'm going back. Let me see if I have anything else other than web images. Um, I am introducing, I always um, introduce kids to not only as far as being photographers, but just other aspects in the um, field, like makeup artists, clothing stylist, um, art director. And I usually, you know, at some point introduce them to those other parts of um, business. <laughs> of the business, yes. That's great. That's what we're very interested in doing with our students is to show them that, you know, that they really can, you know, because kids still have this idea that if they're, you know, ta the talented kids, they, they have this fear of committing to being an artist because they think, they do think that 
if you choose to be an artist, you're going to starve for the rest of your life. Because right. of that that's, myth, right? That's but, what they tell us. Yeah, but, but the thing is, is what we're trying to show them with having teachers like you is that, hey, there's a, there's a, a world out there that you can become professional in that is, uh, relates to the market. And you can, you can make a living. Absolutely. I, you know, I've done that and I've done it other places where I work. I've brought these people in to talk to the kids about um, what they can do. This oh, was done for a jewelry designer. Wow, that's beautiful. Oza, I don't know if she's out here. She looks half oriental too. Yeah, she's Is that the wrong word. Yeah. The wrong word. Asian. <laughs> I still make that I still make that mistake, but I'm old, so <laughs> you so, don't sound very old. Yeah, you sound like my dad. That was he would say. But well, this I don't have my picture on for a reason. <laughs> oh, come on. I look man. a wreck right now. Oh man, you don't know. But this is the difference between an image being um raw and retouched can you tell is it like a big giant difference to you or can you tell what we've done here uh, though the main image is retouched this or? is this image here is raw oh this image is retouched oh go back let me see again Raw. Well, yeah, you made it more dramatic for sure with darkening it. Right. We increase the contrast and we literally just go in and remove every blemish. If you can see, like she has a few small blemishes. And if you look at her stomach, there's a you know a mole here, a mole there. We just literally go in and move each little mole and then hit it with a filter, a light filter just to blend the makeup and the skin just a tad bit but that's the difference between something that's been retouched and she was she's a pretty girl so what well, not even if she wasn't a pretty girl but it's just really about the skin is what we're really worried about mostly people with they're even advertising something on tv now that is uh a body cover that you put on like lotion but it blends and highlights the skin and takes away even birthmarks and tattoos mm -hmm. it's probably like some type of foundation i don't know if alicia's still there she can tune in and she does that for a living she creates makeup lines and stuff like that but um it's supposed to be different than a foundation because they put it all over their skin and it doesn't get on clothes or it. I don't understand it. <laughs> I don't know. Interesting. <laughs> Let's see what else we got here. This is something that I've been, I shot this a few months ago. I think, oh God, probably about six months ago. But it was pretty much the last thing I did. Oh, that's wonderful. Before I left. I love that. Thank you. There's movement. That, yes. Even I, though she's, yeah. you know, just standing. <laughs> and, and other, like the lines we were talking about before. Yeah. Lots of lines. Oh, and look at her hair. Yes. <laughs> the color and the lighting is just dramatic. Very. Thank you. The outfits. Oh, my. Let's see. And if anybody's interested, like we have, let me see if I have some lighting diagrams. And this is uh, what I call my a basic beauty setup. And I have a reflector here. And I use two lights in the background to lighten up the background and also to give you like these highlights on the shoulder. And if you look here in the hair, you'll see highlights in the hair to kind of separate the um, subject from the background. Uh, Are you connected with an institute of some kind now that you're in Chicago to help? No, I haven't really. I'm going to go back to New York and um, before I 
I'm, you know, I haven't really settled in here yet in Chicago. I moved here. I got this apartment like two years ago in Chicago, but I haven't, um, I haven't committed to Chicago yet. So I've been uh, to even look for work. Uh, I'm back to New York for just a second. Because there's a there's an institute here that that uh, has all of these different things from pottery to phot photography to blah 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 within them and they teach mm. and that would be ooh, a great what's place. that institute in where is it in uh air uh it's in mesa arizona oh mesa out there what's it mesa called? art institute is it the art institute Gardens. of mesa you know where we went and and I climbed all those steps and stuff. Okay, too much information. Uh, anyway, <laughs> they have, uh, it's, uh, I can't think of the name of it right now, but it, it um, they also have like shows and what have you, but then they have a separate place to teach and uh, people pay hundreds of dollars to go there for uh, the, all the different work you know, that they can sign up for. It's the Mesa Art Center. Yes, Mesa that's Art it. Center is that it? Yes, that's it. Get out. Well, that's pretty risky right now to go to another. After you have, I mean, your work is based on reputation and clients, you know, referring and stuff like that, and you've built up quite a following here in New York. You've got you know, working with a lot of people, you go to another city, you're like, it's ground zero again, right? And this, it, it kind of feels that way, probably why I'm afraid to really go out there. But um, Well, there's an economic recession in place too right now, so right, getting right. new work is going to be really short. And right. come back to New York. I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my way. But these are just some lighting diagrams. You still have your apartment in New York, right? Yeah, I have my apartment. I, I'm still paying rent. So I got to go and enjoy it. Yeah. Um, these are just different lightings that I use to um, literally do different things. And if you look at the light in this one, because I'm using this beauty dish right here, and it's pretty much, I wish I could turn it around and show you, but it's somewhat soft but it's harder when you compare it to a giant light source like this, a bank light. And you get, if you look at the model space, you can tell like the difference between um, what the lighting does. Oh, sure. The spread of light and um, all that. This young lady is on a television show called Black Lightning. She plays the daughter, the lesbian daughter of the superhero. And Black she, Lightning? Yeah. I love that show. I love that show too. <laughs> Is it on Prime or what? It's about a superhero dude who runs around and he has, um, he shoots lightning out of his self. But that's his daughter. She plays his daughter. This woman was from um, America's Top Model. And she had some show, like a, she was a nurse on a doctor show not too long. She got killed off about a, a little while ago. Wow. But, um, and then this is like backlighting when you want to talk about, this is like all natural lighting, but I'm literally just reflecting the light from that window into this model's face. And Janine, you may recognize that's your couch in your house again. I use her house a lot. And um, this is natural light in my studio in Chicago, in New York. And I literally, just either get depending on the, the how the lights coming in at, at the particular time of the day but a lot of times a light hits the floor here and i bounce that light into the model space from the floor with a little fill light on either side i should have um, put some light understanding this now you're showing us literally these are illustrations of how you do the shots right because yes. those i just got that <laughs> <laughs> yeah so here, back here, I was showing you my basic lighting setup. A, two, a backlight, two backlights, a beauty dish, a reflector, and another reflector on the floor. 
these are really good uh, teaching tools, right? It's like, oh, here's how you set up. <laughs> right. the show. Yeah. And this is a light, this is, um, I think it's Rembrandt lighting. I forget the name of it. But um, it's about where you place the light in, in relationship to the model. Let's see. And here, I'm showing the difference between a window light and a flash with the same models. You can really see the difference on their face and what the light does. Um, this is a better diagram here. Same model, same situation, but two different forms of lighting. On the left is all artificial light. And on the right is the same woman in the same place, pretty much, but with the window light that's coming into the studio. Well, say it's Beth. Remember Gary Kolb uh, making us make a paper bag look like a rock or any number of things with the same, different lighting? Mm-hmm. Yes, basically. And it is about, and a position of lighting as well. Is that Beth? That was Beth. Yes, it was. Okay. Yes, it was. Beth. Okay, so Hosea, you managed to go up to an hour now. Uh oh. So Our just letting everybody know originally, Hosea was going to be showing with Hector Kanage, our uh, digital illustration teacher, or digital animation teacher, but unfortunately, he had a family emergency and couldn't make it today. Uh -huh. But well, Hosea, you managed to fill up the time. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. You did it. You were worried at first. I was very worried. So I'm glad everyone came. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. I really super appreciate it. Um, like I said, if you want me, if you want to see some of these diagrams or me to send you some stuff, just um, send me a text and I'll send you a text. You know, I'll answer you back. And if you have any questions, we're wrapping this up right now, I'm sure. Right, Michelle? Yeah, yeah. If you want to turn off your screen share, um, you know, I just wanted to let people know. Right. Well, this has been our most uh, widespread group here, Hosea. Thank you so much for Thank zooming in Appreciate from it. Chicago and everyone else from all over the country. Really love to have you. Thank you and spread the word about our, our little organization here in the Bronx with a great, That's wonderful so community. <laughs> Right. Thank you. We're everybody. here and we're growing. Will do. Mariana, okay. thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Have thank a good you. day. Mm -hmm. Stay right. healthy. Stay safe. safe. Safe, cool. All right. See you soon. Beth, thank you. Be creative. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Stay Bye. inspired. Very inspiring. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jose. I'll talk to you later, buddy. Okay. <laughs>